Happy holidays everybody and last video of 2022 already. And what a year it has been. And normally this time of year I analyze Mexico's head coach and grade him on the type of year he's had. But seeing as Ertata Martino left Mexico after the 2022 World Cup, I figured I would highlight Entizzi, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, who requested a deep tactical analysis of Martino. So maybe I can shed some light on why Tata Martino and Mexico struggled so much in Group C. Let's have a look. Let's start by having a look at what formations Martino opted for in these crucial World Cup matches. 4-3-3 against Poland, 5-3-2 against Argentina, and 4-2-3-1 against Saudi Arabia. <sighs> Mexico had no playing style or sense of identity, and honestly, it's just sad. You tell me, why would Martino continue using the 4-3-3 formation, which was clearly not working even before the World Cup, and keep ineffective forwards in his starting lineup who couldn't even get goals against teams like Sweden and Colombia? Same formation and same players who could not beat non-World Cup teams. But honestly, I could forgive this and more had it not been for the decisions made in the second match of the group stage against Argentina. 5-3-2? Really? I absolutely hate to see any coach line up Mexico in such a timid way. This was a time for Mexico to be bold and go for the win, not be timid and try to defend a 0-0 scoreline for 90 minutes. In my opinion, this has to be one of the biggest errors for Martino as Mexico's head coach. And I just want to take a moment here and if you're enjoying the video, be sure to give me a like. It lets me know that you want to see more Mexico related content in the future. Also subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss out on future videos because we're going to be having a lot of giveaways planned for 2023 so be sure to not miss out. It's so much easier to play to your squad strengths instead of trying to force any last minute strategies on your players. And right from the start, I would say Martino failed in both of these categories. In their previous five matches before their opener against Poland, Mexico scored eight goals, averaging 1.6 goals per game. The problem was half of those goals were scored on Iraq and El Tri lost three out of those five games. Naturally, fans of El Tri were calling for a change of of names up front. But Martino can be incredibly stubborn and this proved to be his Achilles heel. Let me give you the three players I would have left home and then I'll give you my reasoning why. Then I will give you the names that I would have brought to Qatar instead. Given his poor performances domestically and with El Tri, my first pick to stay home would have easily been Funes Mori. The second player who would not have been on my list is Raul Jimenez. And finally, the third player I would have left home is Alvarado. Maybe El Tata Martino chose Alvarado because he can be a tactical alternative, being able to play on both flanks and also being able to play as a false nine. Raul Jimenez can be a lethal striker when he's in form, but as I'll explain shortly, that was not the case here. And as for why Martino brought Funes Mori, the jury is out. I mean, I can't see any stat or anything that would boost his argument for having him at the World Cup other than the fact that he's from Argentina. Now let me give you the names of the players I would have brought instead, and I'll give you my reasoning on why I think they would have been a better option. Funes Mori only played four minutes in the World Cup. I do not understand why a coach would bring a player that they do not plan on using, but I guess we'll just chalk it up as another of a comedy of errors on Martino's part. Instead of the Argentinian, I would have swapped him out for Santi Jimenez, the joint top goal scorer in the Europa League currently, who I am sure would have at least been considered to play, unlike Funes Mori. Up next, Raul Jimenez would not have made my list, and instead I would have opted for Chicharito, who ended top 5 in the MLS last season with 18 goals and 2 assists. And don't get me wrong, I personally really like Raul Jimenez, but just based solely on the number of injuries the guy has had recently, he should not have been considered. A serious head injury back in 2020, along with a knee and groin strain earlier this year, left him with only three months of playtime to find his form. 
And last, but definitely not least, I would have left Alvarado at home and instead brought Diego Lainez. El Tri desperately needed someone with a change of pace who could break defensive lines with his dribbling ability. While Alvarado can fill other positions on the pitch, Lainez has an unpredictability to him that could have been a massive help, especially against Poland's disciplined back line. And for those of you who are in the comment section ready to defend Martino's choices, zero goals, zero assists, zero shots on target combined between these three players. Poor player selection from El Tata Martino, I rest my case. But I want to know, how will you remember Gerardo El Tata Martino? Also, for anybody who made it until the end of the video, I just want to give you a sneak peek. We have our next live event here on VC Football on January the 8th. Be sure to tune in because we have a giveaway planned for that live video. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.